Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today we're going to be creating a dog and it's up to you, just basically the face of a dog, but it's up to you what color combinations you would like to use. I did this lesson with third grade and here's some color combinations that they chose to do. This one almost looks like a chihuahua. I get the look of that. And what, it's interesting because each of the dogs has a total different personality as you're looking at them. They're adorable. This one almost looks like my dogs at home. I have some sheep dogs with the longer jowls here. I love this color combination. I like the lighter value under here. That's really nice. But I'll show you some more of them at the end of the video. Let's get started on making our um, dog. And we can call it a boxer dog if you want because that's kind of like what I'm looking at to make this. I'm going to start, first of all, um, with a medium value color and we're going to be making this center area here. So what I do is I find the center of my page and in the center I put a marking and I'm going to make a diagonal line down and a diagonal line down and I'm just painting directly with my brush. I like painting better than having a pencil line showing. If, if I need to correct the line, see, I can just move it and it corrects itself. Uh, then I'm going to curve round, curve around, go gentle and slow. I'm, I start out with a flat brush. Then I'm going to bring this in toward the center line and in toward the center line. And that forms that kind of jowls or muzzle of the dog. It's the padded areas around their mouth and nose. And then I'm going to do a number one. With my flat brush, I just lay it and draw, blending in any puddles. And I'm going to fan out. So I'm going to go, and I'm drawing toward the corner, but only about an inch toward the corner. Now, if you notice, this is wider than my hand. So if you need some guidelines, make it at least as wide as your hand. I'm working on an 8x8 eight eight square, so you can adjust it if you're going to do a bigger picture. And I'm going to connect the two and I'm going to fill in. If you want to do it first with a marker or a pencil, like I said, that'll work too. Now from there, I'm going to go mid, see where the curve is here, mid section here. I'm going to draw a number one and a number one and I'm going to come down. And flare, here's down straight. I'm kind of flaring out at the bottom. So I flare out a little bit at the bottom. And I'm going to draw a U underneath here. This forms the bottom jaw. And that's up to you. It gives character. Depends on your shape of your bottom jaw. If you want it long, you want it short, angled, rounded. That's just going to turn give more personality to the dog is how you adjust and ch change it. And I'm going to fill in the bottom body. Long strokes, smooth. This is giving a nice flat base coat. I'm kind of petting it in one direction. If you haven't seen my videos before, I have demonstration videos on how to actually use the brush and get a nice smooth base coat. Now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out colors and I'm going to go into my lighter value. Just wipe the brush off and I find a lighter value. I'm going to fill in here with a lighter value just quickly. And then I'm going to come fill in this area. And I'm going to connect together, find the edge and connect it down to the jaw, the, the padded cheek area, filling in, smooth it out so that your base coat's nice and smooth. I'm going to do this. This is a very fast demonstration and you can go ahead and take your time as you're doing this and make it a little bit neater than mine. Now for the ears out and I'm trying I curve out I'm heading toward the corner and now I'm going to bring it down and back I I want for this particular 
picture I want for this breed of dog, I want pointy short ears. Now, if you want to change it up, that's up to you, how you want to make your breed of dog. Like I said, I'm, I'm trying to kind of do more of a boxer type dog. There. If you look up blue dog, you'll find a famous painting. It reminds me of this one. And connect it and smooth it out. Oops. Now we're going to add a little bit of a darker value in our ears for detail. So I'm just going to put a little bit of darker inners in. Now if you want to switch to a smaller brush, you can. I'm going to be switching mine right now so that I can work on the eyes. Put a little bit of darker color in. That's the base color that we used here. And the reason I'm doing the same color, so right now I have only two color values that I've used so far. I've just used the medium blue and then I've used this lighter value blue here. That's to create unity. I don't want it to be a hundred different colors. It would be too confusing for that. Now I'm going to take my darker value color. I need the smaller brush. I'm going to take my darker value color and I'm going to be painting in. I'm going to first start off with some white and do the whites of the eyes. Now I'd like this to be dry. You want to make sure your background color first is dry. When I'm doing this with students, we get as far as this the first day. And then the next day we add the facial details, collar, and any background. So this is basically day one, then the painting's dry. Then day two, once your painting is dry, you're gonna go ahead and you paint in your eyeballs, circles. I always exaggerate my eyes and make them a little bit bigger than normal so that we can see them in our paintings. Kind of stresses the importance of it. And I always work light to dark. So any day that I would have to use the white, the white is used first. So I'm adding my white eyes and it, you can see how it's still wet, so it's kind of blending in, but that's okay. We'll live with that. Now, once you have that done, you can add the color to your eye. And actually, you can use any color. I'm going to add a little bit of green to this, so make it more of a blue-green eye. This will give accent and um, interest. If I did it all the same, it would be a tad boring. So I'm just putting in little circles for the irises. And this is the iris, which is the eye color. And again, if you wait till that eye dries first, otherwise you're just gonna get too much layers of color and you're gonna end up with puddles like I'm doing. See, I did not wait for the eyes, so I'm getting puddly. Now, when you're done that, you can work up some of your little details on your nose and it's up to you how you wanna paint in your nose. You could even do this with a really dark value blue. So I'm drawing a straight line. Then I do a number one using just the tip of my brush. And then I put a C shape here and a backward C shape here and I'm gonna fill it in. And again, it's up to you how you wanna make that, how big of a nose you wanna make that. My breed of dog that I have at home is the Old English and they have huge noses. All right, and huge nostrils. I have two of them. So there's two, two, two dogs I have. Now I'm gonna do the eye details. Now I'm gonna make a rainbow arch curve. It's gonna start, I'm following the curve here. I'm just using the tip of my brush. Very carefully, I'm resting the palm of my hand on the paper and I'm just scratching the surface with my tip. So I've added a straight line to the top now I'm just going to extend down a little bit, extend down, trying to get rear skinny lines. Some kids, even after this is completely dry, will do this line with a Sharpie. But I prefer the look. If you have brush control and if you practice enough, you'll have good brush control And because I, I prefer the paint look better. So you can add your top lids. If you want to put a little bit of bottom lid in, you can. It's not really necessary. And then do your pupils. The pupils are the windows to the world. That's where your sight comes out of. 
And if you wanna take the back of your brush with a little bit of white, let that dry. Put a little bit of highlight. Highlight, now the highlights go in the same side. So if my highlight is on the, the, the left of the eyeball pupil, it would match the same on the left of the pupil. You don't have to put the highlight in though. That's up to you. Now you can do your collar. This almost looks like a cat, this, his face shape. Do your collar right under the chin. And then with your collar, you can pick any color you want and you just make, start on one side, curve around. If you make it flat, it'll just flatten out the dog and you want it to look three dimensional. So I start up, dip down, then I go straight across the middle and that's more rounded. And then you do the same for the bottom of the collar. Trace your edges neat where it meets, curve to connect. Now, you wanna add anything to your collar, go ahead. Patterns, dots, let this paint dry first before you add anything else. Um, I'm gonna put some spikes, make it kinda of like a tough dog. So I'm gonna put some spikes on my collar right in here, just little tiny lines. It gives more interest to your paper. The details, it's the support of your painting to support it, to help tell the story, just like when you're writing a story. Uh, what else do we need to add here? If you'd wanna take a little bit of another value blue and just trace, this kinda of helps define this area. This is a deep, deep value blue, blue turquoise. A shade of blue, it has a little bit of black mixed in. And I'm doing this uh, kind of face line here, right in there. And then it's up to you how you want to decorate your background. You know, put some dog bowls, dog houses, a fence, uh, whatever you want. But that is our painted dog with imaginary colors. And I hope you had fun uh, creating yours. And let me know in the comments how you did. How did yours come out? And if you can pull a little snap picture, go ahead and take a picture and send it to me. I'd love to see. This is grade three examples of the uh, kind of bulldog that we've been making, um, or boxer dog. And I wanted to show you what some of them did for color combinations and background. It did a really good job on the eyes and facial features. Some of them filled up the entire page with the dog head. The different color choices are kind of interesting. This one has a little dog tag, or you could have been cut out with a cut piece of paper and put your name on it and then glue it down. I've done those before and they come out cute as a little mini dog tag with your name on it. It's up to you whatever you want to do for your background. Here's a nice collar design. I love this color combination with that lime green. It helps if you notice it, if this is a little bit lighter than this area, although all the values need to be fairly light for the skin tone. It seems to show up a little bit better. See how it's, if it's a lighter value, it's helpful. This one's a great one right here. That's awesome, how it fills up the page. But each one has its own little characteristics, makes it uh, interesting. And here's my example of our painted dog.